All right. How's it going, everyone? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and get this uh, get this started. So let me know in the chat once you guys can see my screen. You should be able to see my face and my, uh, my whole screen. I'm going to get into the documentation that we're going to be going over today. And uh, this is honestly one of the simplest strategies that I could find. I uh, really wanted to try and start with something simple for, for a lot of the beginners that we have in the group. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to get the chat pulled up so I can see if you guys have questions throughout. Um, but this is uh, the optimal trade or OTE strategy from ICT. I think some people have mentioned it was like one of his 2022 models. And uh, for those of you uh, that aren't familiar with ICT, he's a trading educator. And there's going to be a lot of different models we go over from uh, kind of his stuff. And uh, this this OT strategy again, it's really great for beginners. It's it's one of the simplest ones, and so I'm gonna kind of go over what the model is, and then we'll dive right into doing some back testing and see how it uh, pans out in in the charts actually. So uh, this OT strategy um, in general, for there's probably different variations of it for this one specifically today. I'm gonna be using the 15 minute time frame, and we're gonna be doing um, basically a what. Um, five hour session from 7 a.m. Eastern till noon Eastern. So a little before New York opens through kind of midday uh, New York. And I've seen this strategy tested on a lot of different Forex pairs, uh, Euro, pounds, um, different, you know, USD CAD, all kinds of different things. I also have heard people have tested it successfully with um, some indices and gold. But uh, today we're going to focus specifically on Euro USD where we can obviously, you know, test different pairs and stuff in the future. But, um, you know, you could definitely ch test the strategy on pretty much any uh, USD pair, um, whether it's indis indices, goals, CFDs, features, etc. cetera. Uh, the basic premise of this strategy is to look for kind of a liquidity sweep um, followed by displacement. And all that means is it's a fancy word for a, like, impulsive um, change in market structure. So we had a kind of ranging market here. We took this high, as you can kind of see by the little dotted line here, swept this high and then displaced um, to the downside, forming a market structure shift. And so all we're going to be looking for are kind of liquidity sweeps and, uh, you know, market structure shifts, essentially, with, you know, kind of impulsive moves and uh, no daily bias. Again, very simple strategy. Could be a sweep to the upside or downside. We're just going to kind of see uh, what's the first one that plays out. And um, really the only thing is... Um, the entries have to take place between 7 a.m. and noon, and uh, I do have some other rules at the bottom here. But um, for this rule specifically, we're going to be using the 62 um, retracement level on the Fib replacement tool. So in uh, FX Replay or Trading View, you guys can go and modify the kind of display levels for your Fib tool, and these are the only four that you're going to need for this one. Basically, the uh, 0.27 extension, which is just negative 0.27. Obviously, you want 0 and 1, and then 0 0.62 is going to be the level that we're going to be entering. And just for a little more context, um, with, when ICT did his teachings, this OTE optimal trade entry level uh, was kind of this the range between 62 and 79%. But for this simplified strategy, um, not worrying about, you know, where's the fair value gap or order block or breaker that's kind of near those levels, we're just simply going to be entering at the 0 0.62 to keep it as simple as possible. And um, once that is, you know, we enter there. Um, so if this, if we were taking this trade, for example, you would enter at the 0.62 retracement of this move. So you basically will measure, and I'll show you some examples. You'll measure kind of this displacement move from the high to the low or, or vice versa if it's the other way. You know, so once it starts coming to the upside, you'll measure kind of the fib on this. You'll enter at this 0.62 retracement. The stop loss is, is just the kind of the high or low that, of the liquidity rate. And your TP is going to be the 0.27 extension. So roughly 2.4R uh, for every single trade, just based on the, the FIB levels. No trade management. Um, again, very simple. We're not going to be trimming a stop, string, break even, or anything like that. Just enter and let it play out. And also, um, the version of this that I saw, there's not going to be any trades um, near Red Folder News, um, or you could potentially avoid Red Folder News days in general, but. Mainly, I'm just going to be avoiding if the trade is kind of happening near Red Folder News, then we'll just pass on it because there's going to be um, obviously a bunch of volatility there. So I'll go ahead and um, copy this link and share it in the chat for you guys to, to play around with it later. You feel free to share with friends or, or wherever this is obviously publicly available for you guys. I'm going to try and um, make these whenever we go over some strategies. Obviously, there's going to be a lot more complicated ones, but I just put that in chat if you guys want to save it out. 
and refer back to it. And then, yeah, let's dive into FX Replay. So I did start like one month <laughs> of uh, testing this just to kind of familiarize myself with it. Um, but I haven't, you know, really done anything. I just kind of picked, you know, I think March of 2022, just kind of random time. And um, yeah, well, let's just dive right into it. And um, we'll back test for at least half an hour here. Um, feel free to reach out with any any questions? Um, I guess I can kind of go through some of the examples that I placed to start, and then we'll we'll start actually backtesting. So, um, there were just kind of show you guys how how it generally looks. Um, let's go back. So we started this in March, and um, for this, I guess yeah. Um, really, the only indicator that I added to my chart for this one um, is this session indicator, in New York. Um, you can customize it to show um, pretty much any time time uh, any sessions that you want. Uh, specifically, I put it to seven to twelve, kind of the hours that we're going to be trading, and I have it color coded <laughs> so that it basically gives me these gray boxes during the hours that I want to be trading. Um, for those of you that weren't on streams previously, you might notice my screen looks a little different. Um, I like I like my dark mode, <laughs> so I just uh, all I've done is I changed the background to to black here and the, the t text to uh, gray. But um, personal preference, you guys can keep the lighter screen if you want. Um, so we've got some, yeah, we've got some people that have used similar strategies. So um, yeah, great to see that some people have used some similar rules and hopefully we'll get somewhat similar results to what you guys have seen and hopefully we can do some more back tests as well. Um, obviously don't have the news indicators on as I'm scrolling back, but this first example, um, there was a sweep and a market shift, but there was news um, this day, so that's why I didn't take this trade. Um, and I guess for, for simplicity, I um, have kind of favorited these tools here. I like to use this um, info line to give me like a different color <laughs> trend line basically. Um, so I'll be using this kind of turquoise line for the liquidity sweeps and just the regular trend line for the market structure shifts. And so you can see here we had an example on this day where um, to start the session there's a little liquidity sweep here swept this high and displaced to the downside pretty pretty strongly. Um, we formed a market structure shift here by closing below this low. And um, you definitely want to see like closures below um, previous levels for a market structure shift. If this had just been a wick, then that's obviously not like a strong um, displaced you know, market structure shift. And then you can kind of see here, I'll maybe try and make it a little bit bigger for you guys. Um, so from the, actually, yeah, I think this one tagged in pretty much right at this level. Sometimes uh, you'll like you'll put the fib, fib retracement on here and then it goes a little bit further and you got to kind of uh, adjust it. I can't remember if this one tagged us in before it made this low, but either way, um, this trade would have been a win. Maybe you would have just caught a little bit more if you'd uh, placed it from here. But you'd enter pretty much right at the 62 retracement level, stop at the high, and you're targeting basically the, the fib extension. So that's kind of how we got our um, you know 2.4 hour win this day. Um, there was only, I think, five trades that I recorded this first month. We'll see if we, once we get more data, if that's like below average or above average. I do think um, a lot of people will kind of look for this strategy on multiple pairs and, you know, maybe try and trade a few at a, at a, at a time because it is, um, you know, pretty much a one trade a day or no trade a day strategy and generally pretty easy to kind of monitor things and, and, and place the trades. So again, uh, this day we had... Um, this one, this trade took forever. I remember <laughs> back to this one. So we had a liquidity raid down here, swept this low, and we had a displacement move to the high and actually mark this market structure shift. But we had a market structure shift there. So uh, we drew the fib retracement tool, and I'll, I'll just you know show you guys how this looks. You'll grab your fib retracement tool, basically take the displacement move, and so you have your 62 level right here, and you can customize the colors and stuff however you want. Um, I did want to show you guys this. Whenever you come in here, um, you can actually save um, save as like a template or something. So maybe you have different favorite tracement levels that you use for all kinds of different strategies. You can actually save the templates both in FX Replay and TradingView to easily kind of access whichever one you want. But once you kind of use it once, it should kind of keep the same format for all your other trades. And uh, yeah, this is the longest win ever. It tagged in like right, pretty much right before um, the end of the day and took like <laughs> a couple of days to play out. But that's the nice thing about Forex, you can kind of hold things through through time. So um, yeah, let's do more live live trading. I you know showed you guys a few of these examples. There were some days that we didn't have fills, but that's also part of trading. You're, you're not going to catch every single move, and this last trade was a loss. So 
Um, for the go to settings up here, I have just set all of the sessions to 7 a.m. New York time so that I can just sim easily use this go to next session feature and it'll jump me to the next day. Um, that's that's pretty much what I use for whenever I backtest. Um, obviously, if you backtest and you're trading London and New York session for something, you would want to you know, make sure you have those populated for those. But if you're just trading one session, I recommend just putting all of them to the same time that you want and you can just say go to the next session. Um, so we do have some news early session right here. So I, this is most likely not going to be a trade day because there's, there's news happening. Um, we've obviously swept these lows. And yeah, there's no trades. Um, this actually wasn't that that volatile. <laughs> I wonder what just you know must have came in at, at expectations. But either way, um, probably wouldn't um, have taken a trade this day just given these these news. I'm gonna turn off these um, prior day highs and lows because we don't need those. Okay, so go to next session. And at any point, feel free to reach out in the chat if you're not sure like why did I draw the fib level where I did or you know, if you're seeing something now, this is my first run through of these, obviously, you know, I, I showed you guys last week that I usually go through an audit, um, my back test after the fact, but I'm just going to kind of do my best this first run through and, and we'll see kind of how things play out. So pretty much a trending day today. Um, so this model is a reversal model. So on kind of trending continuation days, we're not really going to see any trades. Um, you know, if you, I guess <laughs> I'm actually curious now that I, said that um, we did just barely sweep this high and did this level come back to the 62 it did okay so <laughs> I'm gonna go back and, and catch this one actually um, I'm gonna come back and actually record this trade because it did technically sweep this level here and then displaced lower um, so this would have been a win that I'm gonna just replay back real quick and capture this win but if it had not swept this high, then I wouldn't have uh, recorded this trade. So we've got our liquidity sweep. We've got our change in structure with displacement to the downside. We're going to place our FIB tool from kind of the displacement move, enter at the 6-2 retracement, stop at the high, and we'll target out the extension here for a little, little under 2.4R. Um, so we'll place an order. And again, for my backtesting, I pretty much always will use a hundred thousand dollar balance and a thousand dollars risk per trade because for me, I generally will test you know two hundred <laughs> trades a lot of times and I like to have consistent risk per trade, uh, non compounded, so I can easily compare you know performance month to month to month and everything. So um, you might prefer um, to see what the compounding is, but <clears throat> for me personally, I pretty much always use one percent of initial balance. Um, so that's what we're going to be using here. And it's sell limit, there's not multiple entries, so I'm not really going to use tags or anything for this. And we will take this trade. Very, very nice win. Um, so you can catch trending days. You just have to have a liquidity sweep kind of um, to enter in, in line with the trend. All right. So we've gotten a liquidity sweep a little bit early. Let's see if we displace to the upside before the news. Not really. Um, so the only reason I would have taken this trade is if we had, where did my drawing tool kind of displaced to the upside and retested. But since we had news this day, um, you know, wasn't really a day that I was interested in necessarily trading anyways. <clears throat> How do you save your drawings on the tart uh, when you refresh to trade? Oh, great question. So uh, we just got a question in chat from Azark. How do you save your drawings on the charts? Um, sometimes if I refresh my page, all my drawings disappear. So this is something that took me a while to honestly learn myself when I was starting out, but both in TradingView and in FX Replay, you have these layouts up here um, that are kind of labeled up in the top right here. And for every single um, chart or trading session or backtesting session, you're going to want to have a unique layout for each session. And the reason behind this is that it will save kind of how you have your chart organized what um, pairs you're testing, you know, how you have the, um, you know, if you have any certain indicators. And so anytime you do a new back test, I recommend kind of making a new layout. Um, sorry, I could have gone through a little more setup, but um, for this one, I just, um, I only had, this is my first one with this uh, account. So I just basically renamed this account, your USD 15 minute OTE. And if I came in and I was doing another backtesting session in the future, I would kind of just make a copy, rename it, and make sure to use that layout for this backtest. 
Um, so it applies both in trading view if you have different charts and you want to make sure to have things saved for each one or if you're doing different back testing sessions and you want to make sure that the the drawings are all saved because um, it can get <laughs> um, frustrating if you you know can't get your drawing so I, I definitely have had some uh, people that I've mentored that I've had a hard time with that too you're not the only one um, so this next day we've kind of swept this high let's see if we displace to the downside not really any so we've look could you stick to the upside kind of just a ranging day to be honest um, I wouldn't take any trades this day and the reason is um, you know we did have like a liquidity level here that we swept but by the time New York session started or our trading session started there wasn't any uh, market structure shift with like a impulsive move to the downside um, we then swept this level and started coming down but again there wasn't any like kind of clear low we would have needed to see something more like this where we kind of displace make a new low and then retrace um, so no trades on this day there's just a ranging day so we have swept the lows here let's see if we displace to the upside now um, again this is a wick so I wouldn't consider this displacement if this candle had kind of closed up here then I would consider taking it but as okay so that's more what we want to see and let's see when we start pulling back we got our hearts. All right, there we go. So you kind of have to wait to see like when does the move start reversing because that's where you need to draw your fib fib levels. So I mean you can grab either one of these lows. We kind of displaced or swept both of them. So we've got our displacement there. We have a market structure shift here, where we were making kind of lower lows and lower highs, and then we may have a higher high here, with with a nice impulsive move. So we'll draw our fib retracements from kind of this displacement move. Set our long at the 0.62, stops at the low, take profits at the high, at the 0.27 extension, place the order, see if we get tagged in before the end of the day. Only got a couple hours on this one. So, all right, we got tagged in like at noon. <laughs> so um, this might be outside of the hours, but we'll record it anyways. Uh, it looks like it will probably be lost. So. Technically, when I if I'm back testing and I'm I'm very strict to my rules, um, technically like this candle closed at noon and we had not hit our entry yet. So this, in order to stick mechanically to the to the strategy, I'm not going to record this and I'll put a note here that the entry was after entry it was after noon, no trade recorded. And that's like something that's, you know, you might, this trade could have been a really nice win, but same thing. Like if you are mechanically recording a back test and you have to be very specific and non-subjective with the rules. And so technically, since this one uh, wouldn't have tagged before um, noon, then it's not something you should have recorded in the back test. So I like to make kind of text notes as well. So it helps if I'm like reviewing and seeing like, why did I, why did I do that? Or why did I not do that? It also also helps when I'm auditing to see like did I actually record this trade or not. You can look through your kind of closed positions, obviously, but it helps if you like told yourself, you know, I didn't I didn't record this trade. Um, so let's see, we've had a bit of a liquidity seat to the downside and an impulsive move to the upside. So I believe I would be looking long here. So we have our liquidity sleep here, displacement with the upside. I, I missed my entry, but I'll, I'll get it in just a second. Um, we have our market structure shift by a new high creators here. And this one's this is like probably one of the few examples where this model is a little challenging <laughs> because um, we've gotten a liquidity sweep to the downside, some liquidity sweeps to the upside. Like which one do you take? And since this model doesn't have a directional bias, um, it's it's a little bit subjective, obviously, you know, whether you decide to, you know, if there's displacement to the downside, do we look for a short? But um, coming into this session, we've we've gotten our liquidity sweep to the downside and a market shift to the, to the upside. So I'm going to attempt a long on this, and uh, we'll see see what plays this. Seems, seems like it will probably be a loss, but uh, I'll record it anyways. So buy limit here. Let this one play out. Yes, was a loss. So, um, I'm just curious now if a uh, short, no, <laughs> it was, uh, it was the weekend anyways. So, um, 
even if you shorted this one, it would have been like pretty much break even, or maybe you didn't even get tagged in. But um, happy to happy to take it as a loss. I mean, there's going to be wins and losses, and this looked like we were kind of coming down. We swept a level and we shifted to the upside, so I'd be happy to to attempt along there. All right, so now we have kind of swept Sunday's highs, and let's see if we get any displacement to the downside. Okay, where does it turn around? Right there. So we have, you can grab either of these highs, honestly. We swept both of them. You have your liquidity sweep. We have a shift in market structure. And now we're um, pulling back. So we'll put the fibs on the displacement. Sure, at the... 0.62 retracement, stop at the high, target the 0.27, place the order, see how this one played out. Okay, so it's probably no trade. Um, and it, this is one of the cases where, you know, I initially placed the fib retracement here, but after the move continued, I would, I would consider this entire move, kind of the displacement. And so proper entry, I don't think we were going to get tagged in before noon anyways. There just wouldn't be any trade this day. So our proper entry would have been right there um, after revising the FIB retracement to kind of the full move. Um, so this would have been the levels, but I'll just generally put a note here like no fill, which means like I wasn't tagged into the trade, which does happen uh, fairly often with this strategy. But better to wait for better risk to reward than kind of chase these moves later on. All right, we do have uh, red folder news this day, so most likely a non-trade day. Um, it was fairly early in the session, and you know I wasn't entering on the news, so I might personally deviate slightly from um, other people who maybe don't trade red folder news days at all. I, I would honestly personally consider this one. We have a liquidity sweep here. We have a nice displacement move to the upside, um, and let's see if we can catch a continuation with some. Uh, with a retrace trade here. So enter at the 0.62, take profit at the extension. I might regret doing this from <laughs> but Let's see, so we got tagged in and it was a loss. So um, this is one of the nice things. <clears throat> and um, if you, um, you can either use tags to capture this or um, <clears throat> if you Honestly, it might be a, a statistic I can get the team to add as well over time. Like certain strategies do better on news days versus not. And um, <clears throat> over time, <clears throat> sorry, I've got a frog in my throat. Over time, you can like take the trades during the news, news days and then you can kind of analyze after the fact, like how did those trades play out? It's something I often will look at with optimizations. Like if I, you know, can actually hold through news trades or not, obviously some, you know, I wouldn't take any trades on news, but in this case it was, well enough after the fact that uh, personally I would, for most models, um, take these trades. But again, if you if you had a strict rule that you weren't going to trade on uh, red folder news days at all, then this is a trade you probably would have passed on. So let's go to the next session, kind of chop it around to start the session. We have a sweep to the upside, followed by somewhat displacement to the downside. Um, we did close a market structure shift here. So let's see how this one plays out. I would prefer to see a little stronger impulse move down. I mean, it was it was pretty much straight down, but it didn't close that like confidently below. So I'm I think this one may be a loss. We'll so we'll see what happens. But if I take the fib retracement for the move, place the short at the 0.62, stop at the high, target the 0.27. Let's see what would have happened with this one. So limits. So it went a little further. So I need to revise my entry a little bit. So I'm going to cancel this, adjust my entry, adjust my take profit, place the order again. And we'll see if so we did get tagged in and we'll see what would have been a loss. <clears throat> so um, yeah, I think this strategy has like a 50, 60% win rate. We'll look at the analytics later, but a couple losses in a row. Um, again, the the reason, if you don't have a, a daily bias in this case, uh, we did sweep this level and, and reverse the other way. <laughs> so um, oftentimes, um, you know, you if you're kind of in a ranging environment where it's kind of going back and forth, you might not be able to catch um, 
you might just um, get stopped out when it rains the other side and comes against you. But uh, more often than not, you should catch wins with this strategy because it's it's generally a trend continuation strategy. You're you're looking for a trend shift and you're kind of jumping in on a retracement. So we have news this day. Um, so probably no trades this day. Yeah, it's just a big trending day. <laughs> So two red folder news days, what was this? Uh, retail sales and consumer index. Yeah, no trades on this day with this model. And then all the volatility is gone. <laughs> um, let's see, kind of just ranging right now. I haven't really swept or displaced either way. Yeah, just a flat kind of ranging day after this crazy day. Everyone was, just took the day off the next day, I guess. Um, so see if we get some more volatility here. I'm going to go back to the 15 minutes. All right. That's interesting. Oh, that was just New York open. Okay. Um, yeah, not really any clear displacement. I mean, sometimes in New York open, you'll get kind of the longs and shorts will get kind of wrecked early on. So um, I'm waiting for like clear displacement one, one way or another. Um, so we have displaced the downside. I might have looked for a short here, but it's after the session's over. So, probably no trade, news, no trade. There's no trade. All right, let's see if we can finally catch a trade. <laughs> I guess it's better to not tra take trades versus taking discretionary trades. But um, yeah, the market's just kind of trending right now and we're not really seeing a whole lot of trades from the model in this section. I've had some uh, months when I've accessed where I only have a couple trades in a month for a strategy. I had the pattern strategy I showed you guys, uh, gold in particular, would have some stretches that I would have very few trades um, kind of in trending market environments. So uh, we have a sweep of highs here, followed by some displacement to the downside, but there's news and generally will not want to trade during news. So yeah, again, probably a no trade day because of the news. <laughs> I promise we will get a trade soon. Be patient. Um, so we've got a sweep to the upside here followed by some downside displacements. See if we get a full back. I'm not sure if we'll get filled with this in time, but we have a sweep here followed by a market structure shift displacement to the downside. Let's place our fib retracement tool from the high to the low. And we will enter at the 0.62 retracement, stop at the high, target the 0.27 for a 2.4R. We'll see if this one tags us in before the session's over. It may not. No, not quite. Very close. So again, um, also happens with <laughs> some uh, trades. You'll you'll get really close to getting tagged in, but sometimes um, the, the move just happens without you. So uh, this is again another one that I would say probably no fill for this day, but it was very close to tagging us in. No fill. Go to next session. No fill before noon. No fill before noon. All right, so we have news again on this day. So likely no trade unless we get some displacement to the upside. Yeah, wasn't a very impactful news, but um, because of the red folder news here, um, <clears throat> we um, yeah didn't have any trade this day. Um, so let's see here, we have a uh, small liquidity sweep to the downside. Um, this actually might, you know, we don't have any market structure, structure shifts yet. So okay, now we do. Let's see if we get a pullback here. All right. So we have a sweep of these lows. We have a displacement to the upside for market structure shift. So we will capture this entire um, move here with a entry at the 0.62, stop at the low, target the extension, Let's see if this one actually tags us in. All right, see how this one plays out. Bit 
gonna hold this one for a while, but it was eventually win. <laughs> um, so yeah, I didn't see anything about like closing before news um, when I was looking at the model. So I think it's mainly you don't want to enter during news when there's like a big surge of volatility. But um, after you were entered in the trade, it was really just like let it play out uh, no matter what. So I wouldn't do any trade management around these news. Obviously, this one luckily worked out in our favor. But uh, either way, uh, I think you could kind of hold the, after you enter these trades, you can kind of enter uh, any time after the fact. So go to next session. Let's see, we have no real sweep. So we have a sweep of the low. Sorry, we had a sweep of the high just before. All the displacement to the downside. So right here you have, and one thing that'll probably be helpful with this is, um, the displacement is really like the key like um, obviously there can be liquidity sweeps on both sides but um, by the time you see the displacement to one side or the other that kind of helps give you the directional bias uh, for the trade you want to take so obviously we had um, big you know, kind of displacement here to the downside formed a lower low here for a market structure shift if we place our fib retracement tool here we'll do a short at the 0.62 stop at the high Target out the extension and to see how this trade would have played out. So no tag, didn't tag us in. Um, no trade this day. No fill. Let's see, we're pretty much two months in and we're up 6.7%. Um, so again, this is like a slower model i mean the simpler the models often you won't have like the craziest risk to award but if you are new like these are a great place to start both the back testing and trading and again you could potentially trade the same strategy with multiple pairs and maybe maybe you're only getting three to five r per pair per month um but if you trade a couple two or three different pairs with the same strategy maybe you'll you'll get enough that you can you know pass proper and challenges in a month or two uh, so we had a nice sweep of the lows here, followed by displacement to the upside, but there is news again. So this is probably a non-trade day. Um, yeah. Wouldn't have been a trade day anyways. It would have had to come down all the way back here to tag us in, so it wouldn't have been a trade either way. Next session. <clears throat> No real liquidity sweeps here. If this had been a lower low, then I would have considered that a sweep, but um, we've pretty much just got continuation move up here. So let's see. We're pretty much at the end of the day here, so there actually that might have tagged us in. Let's let's take this one. So we do have a sweep of this high right here, followed by uh, move to the downside for a market structure shift. I'm going to go back just a little bit so we can record this one. So we had a market shift. We'll put the third retracement on the displacement move. Enter at the 0.62. Stop at the high. And target out 0.27. So it might have been a loss, but let's see how, how it would have played out. Yep. So and it and it did enter at, you know pretty much right at the end of the day. So this would have been one that we recorded. Another nice thing too, and um, I hope you guys are excited for 2.0 because I think it's going to give you a lot better information on this. Um, I have a suspicion that the trades that are tagged kind of later in the session, you know, after maybe 10:30 Eastern time, probably have lower win rate than the rest. And so. Um, after you record all of these, you'll be able to see in the analytics, like, okay, I'm, I'm only going to trade maybe 7 to 10.30. Like, I'm not going to worry about the last, you know, hour and a half of kind of the morning session. Um, but the nice thing is once you have the data, you can kind of make those decisions. I had a strategy that I back tested the entire New York session and realized I could capture like 90% of the profits in the first um, three and a half hours of New York session. So that's the only time that I actually traded it. So let's go to the next session. All right, so we have a sweep to the downside, but no real displacement to the upside yet. And we are coming into news. This is probably just a no trade day. Um, if there wasn't news, then I probably would have considered a short, but again, we didn't have a pullback to take it either way. 
Did we sweep this high? Maybe like to the tick. <laughs> five, seven, five, like barely. So we have swept this high here and we have formed a market structure shift. So let's see if we turn around. Uh, we are coming up on news, but let's see if we can get the entry before the news happens. So that's our displacement leg. We have a market structure shift right here with a closure below this previous low. So let's enter at the 0.62, stop at the high, and target the 0.27. And if I don't get tagged in, like maybe 15 minutes before the news, then I'll probably cancel this one. So limits. Um, yeah, so we're coming up on the news. I'll do one more. Yeah, I'm just going to cancel this because we're coming up on the news and we could have pretty significant volatility. Um, Would have worked in our favor, but we just didn't get tagged into this one. So no worries there. All right. So we had a nice downturn. Let's see if we sweep either the highs or the lows. We have sweep of the lows. No displacement to the upside yet. So no trade this day. If we had displaced above this high, then I would have looked for a long or if um, we had swept this high, then I could have looked for a short, but no real um, kind of sweep and displace that we need for this model. So we have a sweep of these lows here. Let's see if we displace to the upside before news. Probably not. <laughs> um, so news is hit. We've swept a low and displaced to the upside, but it's pretty much the end of the session. So no trade in this day. We have swept this high. See if we displace to the downside. Not yet. So again, there was a, a wick below this low, but since it didn't close below this low, I would not consider this uh, displacement. It's just a basically failure, um, failure to take out the low. So uh, no displacement there yet. Now we have displacement. So um, again, this one was not because it was only a wick that closed below this low, whereas now we have a strong kind of closure below to form a market structure shift. So we have a sweep up here. We have a market structure shift here. We'll draw our fib from the high to the displacement low. Enter on the 0.62 and stops at the high at the extension. Let's see if we get tagged in before the end of the day. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so close. Um, so yeah, this is also a frustrating one didn't quite tag us in got, got very close but not quite and I think um yeah I think um you could potentially just extend the fib retracement here and see if you get tagged into these new levels but I think if it also hits the 0.27 you could just not um just don't worry about that trade but I will see if I can catch like a small move back here because like this is technically still kind of just one one down move since it didn't didn't tag us in. Place order, sell limit. And it is we still have a little bit of time yet, so we did get tagged in. Fortunately this was a loss. So I'll probably make a note here for this one. Um again this is something like as I'm back testing I'll kind of think through what are some like filters or additional rules that I might want to use or um, what sort of like inconsistencies am I, do I want to make a note of to go back through. So the note that I'll make here is um, no trade if hits extension before retracement. So I would probably go through and review the trades later on and say, okay, um, in, the, in the few examples I had that I had to kind of like like adjust this fib retracement level um was it worth doing that and trying to still catch the move or if not then um kind of after this initial pullback if this initial move doesn't tag me in then i would just kind of pass on those trades but this is something i would kind of just like m make a note for and when i'm going through and auditing and optimizing it's something that i'll take a look at so we'll do a few more examples and then we'll go into analytics and some q a if that's cool with everyone um, so we have news this day, probably no trades, just given the red folder news. So we have a sweep to the downside, 
see if we get some displacement. So now we have a sweep to the upside with no displacement. <laughs> um, probably a non-trade day. Um, I guess in the last hour we could potentially look for a trade. There's probably not going to be one, but we have a sweep to this up to this upside here, followed by a displacement to the downside. Um, that's our low. We could place the fib from the high to the low. See if we can enter in the last like 30 minutes of this trading session. Place order, save. Nope, no fills before the end of the day. So let's get one more trade recorded, um, whether it's a winner or loss, and then we'll just jump into the analytics. So uh, we had what? kind of sweep of these lows followed by a displacement to the upside. So we have a sweep here, market structure shift here with displacements. We'll put our fib from the kind of displacement leg low to the high. Oops. Enter long here on the 0.62. Stop at the low, target the extension. And we'll see if we get tagged into this one or not. Nope. <laughs> so, um, yeah, let's go through a couple more days, but I do want to have some time for analytics and questions. So we've swept this high here. Let's see if we just place to the downside. We did take out this low, so I would say this is a valid trade. So we swept this high, and then we came down here and displaced below this low for our market structure shift. We put our fib retracement tool on this leg, which is smaller than most, but still valid. Enter at the 0.62, stop at the high, target the extension, and we'll see what this one does. So again, this is a potential another one of those examples where I'm going to make an adjustment here to the fair retracement tool because this is kind of all just one leg right here. We'll adjust our entry to the 0.62 and adjust the take profit to the new extension. Let's see if we get tagged in now. Yeah, no trades. <laughs> so yeah, this is a pretty infrequent trade model. Um, it is a very simple model, which is the benefit, but uh, if this is the only fair you're trading, you're going to be twiddling, twiddling your thumbs a lot just because there, there aren't a whole lot of trades with this specific model. But I do think it's a nice one for beginner traders. And if you backtest maybe two or three pairs, you can kind of watch all three of them and maybe get, you know, um, three to four trades a, a week potentially, instead of just, you know, half a dozen a month. Um, so let's see if we sweep this high. It's kind of just a ranging day, no real displacements um, that I would really consider. We have swept this high now if we displace down, but it's already kind of the end of the session. And now we have kind of swept those previous highs and displaced down. So this was a pretty quick one. I might have actually missed the entry here. Um, we did technically take this high and then very quickly displaced um, for a low here. Um, so I might replay this back one candle just so I can kind of fully capture this move. So we'll put our fib retracement from the high to the low. We'll enter at the 0.62 retracement. Stop at the high. Target the extension. Place order. As long as it plays out before we're done for the day. Unfortunately, another loss. All right. So um, again, this is a strategy that I would honestly recommend testing for um, probably like 50 to 100 trades. Um, it is profitable. Not, not like the, the most profitable strategy ever. Obviously, only a 4% in a couple months is not <laughs> is not that much. But let's take a look at the analytics um, just to see kind of what we've got so far. Um, so really not the best equity curve. Um, there's probably, you know, daily bias helps with these. Uh, I do think, you know, some of you guys talked about um, maybe a couple additional factors that you would add to some of a model like this. Um, as I mentioned, if it's um, prior day high or prior day low sweeps, then uh, he would place like greater value in those, which is great. Like time-based liquidity, whether it's like uh, session highs and lows or prior day highs and lows, those are going to be better for reversals, obviously. 
Um, and then, yeah, if there's other time frames as well, you'll you'll get kind of more trades. But uh, we are in profits, 3.7%, <laughs> uh, um, you know, pretty low win rate. Like I said, if there's anything we can do to improve that, um, such as potentially excluding um, trades that are later in the session versus not, I think, um, yeah, performance by hour, it does look like... Um, so the trades that are placed, let me make sure the time zone set to the correct time zone. So in the analytics, you can change your time zone. Make sure you do that so the hours line up with what you're looking at. We'll change it to New York. So it looks like, um, you know, again, you need a bigger sample size. This is only uh, 13 trades. <laughs> so not a big enough sample size to like make these decisions. But based on kind of what we have, if you had a larger sample size, 50 to 100 trades, and you were seeing the same, same similar, then it looks like um, you actually might not want to trade this specific pair in the way we've we've been trading it until kind of nine instead of seven, because it looks like the you know we only took three gigant very small sample size, but the trades that happened earlier on were uh, mostly just losses. So um, that's where it's helpful to look at the analytics both by by kind of hour if there's certain hours that are underperforming, but also by days. Um, again, too small of a sample size to really make uh, impactful decisions but maybe we get you know 50 100 trades and realize like wednesdays just are not good <laughs> with this strategy then it might be a reason not to not to trade this specific strategy on, on wednesday, wednesdays at least but um but yeah that's uh mainly what i wanted to go over with you guys uh the biggest thing i do want to uh mention uh, before we end today if you have other strategies that you guys are interested in please go into the event section and we have uh, a feedback form that you guys can say, you know, what strategies you're interested in, what pairs, what time frames. And I'm going to be looking through all of those to kind of look through strategies that you guys are actually interested in. I'll learn them. I'll kind of come up with the mechanical rule sets and documentation, and we'll, we'll back test them together. But uh, I think next week or the week after, I'm going to also share with you guys kind of how I efficiently execute trades for futures and crypto and uh, kind of the best way to calculate your risk uh, depending on which platform you're using. So uh, keep an eye out for that. It's kind of an upcoming educational piece. And then, yeah, feel free to RSVP for future sessions. We're going to be kind of rotating Mondays, Fridays, and Saturdays um, and hope to do more of these. Um, if you guys have anything that um, you have a question about, whether it's uh, strategy-related, um, you have your equity curve from your analytics and you're trying to get insights, feel free to post it in the kind of backtesting of trading channels and we can kind of walk through it but um but yeah if there's no questions we'll go ahead and wrap it up today and i hope you guys have a great weekend i'll talk to you guys later bye